The Legend of Zelda is one of the greatest video game series of all time, and many doubt it will ever be dethroned. The series is filled with classics, and nearly every game in the series is eligible to be featured on this series. It only felt right to start with the current most controversial title, Skyward Sword. Released in November 2011, near the end of the Wii's life, the game is considered to be the final great game for the console. Unfortunately, I had sold my Wii by the time it released and didn't have a chance to play the game until now. While the game is great and, in my opinion, a worthy addition to the series, I can also see why the game's flaws made the game so polarizing for diehard fans. Do the flaws make the game bad? Not even close, but they play a large part in whether or not the game should be considered a classic. A large frustration for players, and the biggest difference from other Zelda titles, were the controls. The game was intended to be a selling point for the Wii Remote Plus peripheral. The sword achieved near perfect readings of the Wii mode. The game's AI is very intelligent and pre can predict your movements, and many of the game's mechanics revolved around properly using the sword and Wii mode for precision. While many fans were excited to have the closest thing to a virtual sword in their hands, it turns out not every player wants to be a sword master. Few games this side of Dark Souls require the patience to master the game's unforgiving control inputs. Let's talk about hearts. In this adventure, you begin with six hearts instead of the normal three. This is deceiving, however, because most attacks dealt on you now take a full heart away instead of the normal quarter of a heart in previous games. For those of us who are mathematically challenged, myself included, this means that instead of taking one twelfth of your life per hit, you now take one six, which amounts to double the damage. If this wasn't difficult enough, Finding hearts is now more difficult because of the changed spawn rate. While I'm not entirely sure about the numbers, I'd go for nearly an hour breaking pots and slashing grass to no avail, while in other titles like Wind Waker or Twilight Princess, you'd get at least a heart in every area or two. To summarize, unforgiving controls and gameplay led to many players putting the game down before beating it. Another reason many players put the game down is filler. While many Zelda games are filled with side quests and extra things to do to extend the lifespan of the game, this one requires you meet certain side objectives to progress. While this is fun at first, it's very clear this is a core part of the game's progression and grows tiresome as it artificially makes the game longer than it should be. The game will take around 40 to 50 hours to complete, but if you took some of the stuffing out, you could cut that amount a third to the game's benefit. Because of the large amount of objectives that must be completed in order, this title has been heavily criticized for its linearity and I'm inclined to agree. Even though I'm being very harsh with the game, I actually had a great time playing it. There were times in between the fluff where the series delivered some of the greatest gameplay moments in the series, and even when you were frustrated by the controls, there are moments where you feel like a genuine badass as you master the controls and get into the groove of solving the puzzles the series is praised for. As I said from the start, this game absolutely deserves to be on any list of the best Zelda games ever and outdoes some of the best titles in a few key ways. Unfortunately, the flaws were just a little too frustrating for me to declare this game as one of the all-time classics. So here we are. Is this game a classic? No. However, I think there's a good chance it will become one. Nintendo has released an HD version of each of the main 3D Zelda games so far, besides this one. The game's graphics hold up surprisingly well, but a high-def facelift would really make this Twilight Wind Waker style world shine especially if they meet the same graphics quality that Wind Waker HD achieved. It would be very difficult to make this title with its original controls, and Nintendo is known for making gameplay tweaks in its HD remasters, so it's natural to assume they'll be ditching the frustrating Wiimote scheme for a more traditional one. If they can do all this and trim the fat like they did in the Wii U remasters, then I would happily declare this title a timeless classic and it'll join its brothers and sisters from the series. But until that day comes, if you want to enjoy this journey, you must be ready to endure its flaws. And I encourage you to do so, because it's a great game. Thank you so much for watching. Tune in next time where I'll be taking on The Witcher 3.